is the third Sunday uh, after P Pentecost, and so um, um, and Father's Day. So we are glad um, that we are to gathering together, and that we are lifting up all of these men who are servants of God. And we're going to begin this morning with "Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God." And anybody that can sing that desk camp, that would be awesome. Um, so it is him 405, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. to begin our service today and Linda is going to be our liturgist so she will lead us in the call to worship. Our relationships with our fathers are complicated. For some of us our father's love is like God's love too deep too long too wide too strong to measure. Some of our dads are here some were never here. For some of us, God's love fills the empty spaces our fathers left behind. All of us are shaped by the relationship or lack of relationship with our fathers. On this day, we remember what it means to have a father or to be, a, be a father. We recognize the importance of fathers in our communities. We pledge as a congregation to love and nurture the fathers among us so that they will make the love of God in all they do. Amen. Righty. So our hymn of praise is Faith of Our Fathers, 710, and we'll be singing all three stanzas of Faith of Our Fathers. Thank you. 
with me in the prayer of confession. Forgiving and gracious Lord, we come here this day with so many things on our hearts. Forgive us when we get busy, so busy with our own lives that we don't take time to reach out to someone who is ill. Someone who is mourning the loss of a loved one. Someone who feels lost and alone. Remind us again how Christ offered his whole life that we might live. He taught us how to be people of compassion and reconciliation. Be with us as we seek to turn our lives around back toward you, O Lord. For it is in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Dear friends, listen to the good news. Christ came to give us new life, to redeem and to heal our brokenness. We are made whole through his boundless love. Amen. Amen. A prayer for all fathers on Father's Day. Father, we come before you today humbled and in your awe of your grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for the way you have designed what a family is supposed to look like and specific roles. You have ordained to a mother and a father how to lead their children. Yet, Lord, all our sinful ways we have taken what you have made holy and created our own version of today's family. Because of this, our children are suffering. It is for the fathers, families, and others of our nation that we do pray today. Lord, we pray, pray specifically for fathers and fatherhood across our land. Your word clearly instructs fathers to bring up their children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. God, we thank you for the men who are leading according to your statutes and the ones that are laying their lives down for your purposes. We pray that you will continue to use these men to lead their lives and other men. We pray you will strengthen the fathers of our nation and that you will continue to empower churches, organizations, and individuals to invest in fathers and fatherhood for the sake of our children. Amen. Amen. Today we come to God um, in this time and and as the words of the prayer have stated, you know, God has a design, and we don't always know what that design is, but we know his perfect love will be known. And so we do pray for that today, as well as pray for those that are struggling with fires, the fires up in Swatch. Um, Mary sent a thing saying that Montana got rain but there's still several fires throughout um, in Arizona and California and also in Colorado. So we do need to remember this time of dryness um, and people that are struggling to keep what they have from being burned up. Also, we need to continue to pray for those with the virus. Um, it hasn't completely begun to decrease, but it is maintaining its own so that, in a way, is, a good, is good news. And then for civil unrest that is throughout our country, um, many people have very, um, very poignant ideas, and, uh, and they are free to express those opinions. But we pray that God's mercy and grace and patience would win through, that we would um, try to remember that God loves everyone, no matter what kind of political view they have or don't have, um, and those that are lost as well as those that uh, call themselves his children. So let us go to God in prayer this morning. Patient Lord, how trying we must be to you sometimes. We whine and whimper about our inabilities and our lack of trust. Yet we want something from you. We shout from the top of our lungs and demand your attention like an unruly child. You quietly call us into service, not offering the road of easy service and cheap dis discipleship, 
but rather sharing with us the needs of the world and proclaiming that you will be with us always. Our ministries of faithful service are based in the knowledge of your powerful healing presence and mercy. Give us courage, Lord, to be your disciples. Let us be bold in our proclamation of your healing mercy and our attitudes and our actions. This morning, as we come to you in prayer, we pray that you would hear our prayers, for we are gathered together to lift these in supplication. We lift up all of those that are in need of surgery and have health concerns, especially those that deal with all types of addictions. We lift up the concerns of our local community, from the fires to to the virus, to unemployment, to social unrest, and those that are hungry. Lord, we lift up our first responders, our police and military, anyone, Lord, that goes into harm's way to help those in need. We ask that you would be with those who put themselves at risk to keep the country running, those that are probably considered minor, minute, folks, those that are struggling to feed their families and yet are doing this at a risk. We ask that you would be with our nation, Lord, in this time of unrest. You would be with elected leaders, that you would be with military and leaders and uh, police and organizational leaders. Give them wisdom to act with your guidance. Lord, we lift up our local leaders as well, as many are making decisions that are unpopular. Give them grace and give them mercy and protection. We lift up our world, Lord, for what we are struggling with is not just simply something that happens here, but it is global. So let our eyes look at a community of the world instead of center and swatch. Lord, lift up pastors and religious leaders throughout the world. We give you thanks for our bishop and our leaders who, who led us through an annual conference this year. We ask that you would be with others, other denominations as well. And as we join together so that all voices are equally heard, we ask that it be received in love and affirmation. Lord, we ask that you would be with those that have unspoken requests. We ask that you would deal with those needs individually, and we give you praise for what you're going to do. We lift up Bobby Abbott and Ray Abbott, Jacqueline Collier, Dora Mae Crawford, Marilyn and Dick Eagles, Betty Finley's daughter, Pam, Wayne Garcia, Isabel Geibel, Margaret Gilligan, Tracy Gunther, Debbie Hall and family, Sue Jenkins, Eva McLean, Dakota Miller, the Miller family in Iowa for safety, Cheryl and Linda Mix, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Shirley Myers, Wayne and Alice Phillips, Sherry Robbins, Marilyn Roberta, Charlene Schaefer, the Ziegler family as Luke fights brain cancer, Cloetta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Larissa Trujillo and Child, Aaron and Amy Ulrich. And Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, we ask that you would be with the Abbott family in the death of, of uh, Bob Abbott with Ms. Wardlow and her family and the loss of her sister, the family of Dick Berman Hefferfer, the Betty Combs and family, Ron Cooper and family and the death of Ernest, Betty Fimley and family, the family of Jim Ford, Regina Hickman and family and the loss of her son, Anthony DeLobato and family, 
the family of Linda Damaris, Linda Mix and family, the family of Bob Myers, Shirley Myers and family, Bishop Karen and family, Claudia and Jolene Robinson and family, and the family of Charlene's neighbor Graham in Mesa who passed. Lord, we lift all of these up and ask that you would hear our prayer as we join together and say the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 17, 1 through 7. And if you will read the bold part, I will read the other. Hear a just cause, O Lord, attend my cry. Give ear to my prayer from, from lips free of deceit. From you, let my vindication come. Let your eyes see the right. If you try my heart, if you visit me by night. If you test me, you will find no wickedness in me. My mouth does not transgress. Concerning what others do, I have avoided the ways of the violent by following your word. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously, show your steadfast love, O Savior, of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with beholding your presence. The epistle reading this morning is Romans 6, 1b through 11. So what are we going to say? Should we continue sinning so grace will multiply? Absolutely not. All of us died to sin. How can we still live in it? Or don't you know that all who are, were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried together with him through baptism into his death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too can walk in the newness of life. If we were united together in death like his, we will also be united together in a resurrection like his. This is what we know. The person that we used to be will be crucified with him in order to get rid of the corpse that had been controlled by sin. That way, we would, wouldn't be slaves to sin anymore because a person who died has been freed from, his, uh, from sin's power. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died to sin once and for all with his death, but he lives for God with his life. In the same way, you also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ. The Gospel reading is Matthew 10, 24 through 39. The disciples aren't greater than their teacher, and the slaves aren't greater than their master. It's enough for disciples to be like their teacher and slaves like their master. If they have called the head of the household, Belizebul, it's certain that they will call the members of his household by even at worse names. Therefore, don't be afraid of those people because nothing is hidden that won't be revealed and nothing is secret that won't be brought out in the open. What I say to you in the darkness, tell in the light and what you hear whispered, announced from, announced from the rooftops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't kill the soul. Instead, be afraid of the one who can destroy both, both body and soul in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin? 
but not one of them will fail, fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before people, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But everyone who denies me before people will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Shh. Don't think that I've come to bring to peace. I have come to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. People's enemies are members of their own households. Those who love father or mother more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who love son or daughter more than me aren't worthy of me. Those who don't pick up, on their, pick up their crosses and follow me aren't worthy of me. Those who find their lives will lose them. And those who will lose their lives because of me will find them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Linda. What a full gospel here. All right. I'm going to share a Father's Day um, film. And um, I'm hoping I am. And it's called Super Dads. I can find it. Okay, <laughs> hang on just a second. Let me see if I can find where that is. Should be right here. All right, let me try it one more time. All right, so let me see if I can get this to go. <laughs> Why is it when you want something to work, it won't work when you want it? <laughs> Are y'all seeing this at all? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. I just didn't see any room. That's a funny part. You can laugh, okay, guys? I don't have it, so. You, you've, uh, you're on Super Dads, right? Yep. yep. And you're trying to get it to play? 
Yeah, it should be playing. It's not it's playing. Not, it's not playing? Okay. Yeah. Let me do no. this one more time. There we go. Do you have to push open location? No, it should be. It should be. There you go. Okay, there we go. It's on now. There's not good video. I mean audio. We're getting video, but not audio. So if you couldn't see it or hear it very well, uh, you're welcome to go to uh, www.umcf uh, center. It's on playing on our website as well as on our Facebook page. But um, our dads are super dads. And uh, at the, today, the sermon, you're going to think that I had super, super dads in mind here. But um, I was blessed because I had fathers. Uh, really good examples of fathers. 
So as we begin, our, our sermon title uh, today is Hear All the People. Um, and so you may wonder why that is even talking about uh, dads here. But as we celebrate Father's Day and men who rise up to be fathers to us all, those are characters that are beyond reproach. It's kind of like the super dads who strive to be providers and examples of how to live holy lives. An awesome responsibility. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you in our fears and frustrations. We are unable to serve and often beaten down by life, but give us courage and strength to help us joyfully serve you by serving others. Open our eyes and our ears to the message you wish us to May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. In our epistle, Paul describes a new life in Christ, to live in Christ. The gospel reading talks about God's provision and following Jesus. And what better day for us to look at the lesson God is showing us as, as we celebrate Father's Day. I don't know about you, but during the last 15 weeks, there are so many people saying so many things, it's hard to know what to do, and many of us stand in a trance. Thankfully, my son is a scientist, and I learned early on to listen to doctors and scientists who were fighting this virus. Even though the information they would share changed based on its data, it would be logical and sensical, a sensible way, not an emotional way forward. And as we have seen, many people speak but do not have background knowledge, which makes their explanations confusing and nonsensical. The same thing is true about the social injustice, and, and many of us who speak from a place of privilege, it's hard for us to have that view of the other side because we haven't experienced it. And in some cases, we may even feel somehow put upon because of it. But it's much like trying to explain to a rancher how for that rancher to paint a portrait of their ranch while an expert artist is standing there watching and listening to our explanation. It's laughable. Friends, that's what's going on in our world today. So whose voice do we listen to and when? Several years ago, before my husband died, he was doing research for a sermon and he discovered this information and was excited to share it with me about men. There had been a book published, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, and some of you may remember that book. It described how men and women think and process information very differently. And I think we could all agree that is true. It seems that they put 100 men in a room to listen uh, to several recordings going on at the same time and they were told to listen and be prepared to tell what they heard. Similarly, they put a hundred women in another room with the same recordings and asked them to do the same thing. When they asked the women what the information they gathered, none of them could come up with anything but gibberish. When they asked the men, they were able to correctly recount each story that was broadcast. Each man seemed to listen to one thread and follow that thread to its completion. Thus, <clears throat> thus, with so many men in the room, they were able to detail all of the stories. Why and how did that happen? It appears that scientifically, women are emotional thinkers and they were drawn to each story and each voice. As one voice would finish a sentence and another voice would begin, their attention would flip back and forth to all the stories, making it impossible to get a clear storyline. The men, however, 
had a unique ability to block out all other voices than the one they selected to follow. Therefore, they were able to hear the story to its completion and retell it accurately. My husband was elated and I was so hurt, but it was a great lesson on how we are different and how we can learn from one another. I'm sure if some of you have had the example of someone uh, maybe enjoying their fishing uh, TV show or golf show or their football show and someone in another room asking for help and it never being heard. That is another example of this, this phenomenon. But God is imploring us to listen to one voice and block out others whether it be evil, annoying, or friendly, and it's God's voice that matters. Our fathers and men are equipped to have that responsibility to lead by example, and it appears that scientifically they are created to better handle that than women are, and I'm sorry if that offends any females, me included. <laughs> I will always remember the many times my father saw someone asking for a handout and invited them to come eat with us at our table. Each encounter was unique, but my father genuinely wanted to get to know each person, feed each person, and share with them the possible life change. While I can only remember one person who accepted Christ at our table, I can tell you that many lives were changed by his actions. Two of the home actually were hired by my dad and became valuable employees. I saw Christ in my dad, and I learned that he was giving me an example of a heavenly father who dearly loved me. My dad wasn't perfect, but his thread of testimony was impossible for me to forget. I learned from my mom that he did worry from time to time, but he knew that if God could see him through World War I, I mean World War II, sorry, and the Korean War, and hard times, he could see us through anything we encountered. I remember after Hurricane Betsy, before FEMA or any government organization was ever formed, he gathered together some of his oil friends like Red Adair, and Justin Wilson to form a group of volunteers to help those that had lost everything. He got the deacons of the church to put their waiters on and to go help rebuild three churches destroyed in the river parishes. Similarly, I recall my husband doing several similar things in the aftermath of storms and disasters. And he once said to me, you can really tell the character of a true man if he is willing to step up and help. I've been blessed by many amazing examples. And because of that, it's not hard for me to see the hand of God and understand it's his voice we should listen to. But there are many people who don't have these examples, didn't have these experiences, and who struggle with their own fathers either being absent or abusive or suffering from their own issues. So on this Father's Day, as we look at hear all the people, our compassion wants to reach to those that have issues. And I would ask that you would spend some time today as you remember your dad. And if your dad's alive, call your dad and wish him a happy Father's Day, or it, stop for a moment and remember your dad who's passed. Whether the example is a good one or a bad one, thank God for the dad you had, and pray for all of those young men and older men to be fathers for our world today. It was shared on the news recently about um, breaking stereotypes. And for a long time, people thought if you were African-American male, you were somehow distant from your family and your children. 
And there is actually an organization that was formed. And their job has been to help teach younger ones how to love their family and how important it is that they're present in their life. Some of them are actually dads biologically and some are taking the places of dads that are missing. And it was amazing as they showed the statistical results that these particular African Americans spend 65% more time with their children than most other groups. Caucasians spent approximately 50 something percent and Hispanics 45 percent. Now the science part of this says there's some things behind all of those statistics but ultimately I think it's the message that Jesus was giving us here in the gospel that we can share and help be a light to the world. And we have to be willing to take up a cross and follow Christ. It may be an easy cross or it may be a difficult one. And it doesn't matter whether we're male or female, we have the responsibility to do that. For God gave us in the form of his son, the greatest example of how to live with each other, whether we agree with each other or we don't. And that instead of worrying so much where our next meal will come or whether we have money for retirement or all of these things that come into our minds, even money for electricity, it tells us very clearly in the gospel that God knows. It says, aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin, but not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already? Even the hairs of your head are counted. So those of you that are losing your hair, God knows about it. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You are worth more than sparrows. So in this time of uncertainty, we can rest assured that God will take care of us. And then this next part, those who love father or mother more than me aren't worthy of me. And as much as I love my mother and my father, I must tell you, their intent was never for me to love them above anything else. It was for me to love God our father. Those who love son or daughter more than me aren't worth, worthy of me. And this one's tough because I did lose a son and I had to struggle with the fact that moving forward was going to be hard. But again, I knew that God was in control and would help me live without him and that he was with God so I need not worry. Those who don't pick up their crosses and follow me aren't worthy of me. Those who find their lives will lose them, and those who lose their lives because of me will find me. In these uncertain times, this message is very clear. Do we hear all the people and focus on all the stories or do we listen for God's voice and for God's direction as to how to move forward and to how to love people, even when we find it hard to have that love in our hearts? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you possess all the beginnings and ends. In the morning, you are the cradle of the world, and in the evening, you are our comforter. You are the morning dew kissing the buds of the flower, and the evening mist rising from the falling leaves. You are the early sun announcing the dawning of a new day, and the twilight whispering the secrets of another. You possess all beginnings, all endings, 
all failings, all risings, all living and dying. All of your people, all of your creation swells with the rhythms of life and death and rebirth. These rhythms, rhythms compel us to sing, to laugh, to dance, to dream. We sing of sorrows born despite anguish, of joys despite fear. We laugh at mistakes made in our weakness and changes begun in our strength. We dance to the harmonies of the universe and to the melodies within our own breast. And we dream of unknown worlds on the strength of the world we know. We stand as people of faith, convinced not by persuasion of our minds, but by the experience of our lives. We are convinced that all is as you say it is, and that you do number every hair on our head and see our every step. We believe, O oh God, but when faith ebbs, we feel the pain of the world, and it spatters into the still waters of our lives. Infants die without drawing a breath. Wheat fields burn while standing ripe for harvest. Old friends suffer disease whose cures are away. Tornadoes rip through the poor sections of town. Innocent citizens are caught in the crossfire between governments. Workers lose jobs they've held for years, while unemployment have been turned away so many times that they've traded their hope for tears. And children, abused because they wear the wrong color skin, speak the wrong language, live under the wrong flag, worship the wrong God, have no hope to lose. The list is long, O oh God, but somewhere in our midst of our sorrows, you are walking, holding hands, lifting up, mending wounds, breathing new life and receiving the old. This we believe, and in this belief we find strength to remember and to respond. You have numbered us from the first to the last. We pray that you might grant us the compassion to count one another daily. Let us reach to those who stumble and break their fall, to the fallen to pull them to their feet. Let us be caught up when we are about to faint and be lifted up when we are struggling to rise. And we ask this in your blessed holy name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, this morning as we uh, move to our time of responding and commitment, I want to thank you again for your generous donations and offerings as we continue um, to receive them both by mail and by online and also by text. Thank you, whether it be $1 or 100, it is most graciously received and welcomed and appreciated. Let us sing our hymn of commitment, Rise Up, O Man of God. And I would like for our Mike to unmute himself and lead us in this wonderful hymn. It is hymn 576. Oh, man, our God, 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 our
Church, you do doth way. Sorry, Debbie, but when I sing, the the accompaniment goes away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you could do you could do it a cappella almost. Yeah, I know. Not Thank good. You. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your attempt. Our benediction this morning, if you would join me. God has given you all that you need as you reach out in love and caring to others. Go into God's world bringing the good news of redemption and hope. In Jesus' name, go in peace. And may the God of peace go with you always. Amen. Our sending forth is wherever he, where he leads. Uh, verse 2. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I'm sorry, I am singing the first verse. Let's go back and sing the second, like I said. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he joining me today and happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you, Debbie. And yes, I'm, happy Father's Day, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, I'm Debbie. not doing a children's moments today because today's Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> yeah. Happy Father's Day, guys. All right. And a uh, center will attempt to reopen next Sunday. You will need to get here about 10 o'clock. Y'all take care. Thank you. Have a good week. You too. Thank you.